The year was 1814. It was a quiet October afternoon in the St. Giles slum of London when suddenly a huge boom came from the Henry Mew and Co. brewery. Thousands of gallons of black liquid swept through the streets absorbing everything and everyone within its sticky reach. This event would go on to be one of the most devastating events in beer history. This is the story of London's lethal beer flood of 1814. But before this, let's look a bit further back. The Horseshoe Brewery was established in 1764 and rapidly became one of the largest producers of porter in the world, making over 40,000 imperial barrels of beer annually. The brewery was located in central London and was named for the shape of its room in which its tap was held. In 1809, ownership of the Horseshoe Brewery was incorporated into the Henry Mew & Co. portfolio becoming one of the biggest porter producing franchises in London history. To celebrate, Henry Mew had several three-story tall fermentation vessels installed to maximize porter production. Each vessel was capable of holding 3,500 barrels of beer. The vessels were essentially giant wooden barrels held together by giant 700-pound iron rings and became the heart and soul of the brewery. People loved the beer, business was booming, and things were good. At around 16.30 in the afternoon on Monday the 17th, 1814, storehouse clerk George Crick was inspecting the fermentation vessel when he noticed that one of the iron rings had corroded to the point of coming undone and falling to the ground. Crick was unconcerned. He had worked for the brewery for almost 17 years and knew that this wasn't uncommon. In fact, these rings would often have to be replaced several times a year. When he informed his boss, he was told that no harm would come of it and that he should write a note to inform another brewery worker capable of replacing it at another time. So that's what Crick did. However, almost comically, as soon as the note had been penned, a loud explosion rang out from the storeroom. The compromised vat had essentially disintegrated from the released force of the fermenting porter. The destruction was increased as debris from the first fermentation tank caused the other super vessels to release their contents as well, spilling millions of pints worth of beer and causing a sticky black tsunami to surge through the brewery, breaking open additional barrels and absorbing their contents into its destructive borg. The nearly 500 tons of beer smashed against the wall of the brewery with an explosive force, causing bricks to fly over building tops and toppling the wall down onto a 14-year-old servant girl, killing her instantly. The wave of lethal deliciousness continued to surge down the streets of St. Giles. There was no drainage on these streets, so the beer had nowhere to go except directly into the homes of nearby citizens, toppling many of the residential structures on its way. But the worst damage occurred on New Street, where the torrential flood swept away a mother and daughter enjoying tea and drowning the young girl in the process. But worst of all, there was a group of mourners gathered in a nearby cellar to support a grieving mother who had lost her two-year-old son the day prior. The shock of the beer flood was enough to cause the structural integrity of their home to collapse in on itself, killing the mother and five others. The aftermath was truly devastating. St. Giles was now filled with waist-high amounts of beer, causing extreme difficulty for the rescue workers to reach the injured. Additionally, the flood of Mew and Co. Porter claimed the lives of eight women and children in total. However, these numbers have been disputed over the years. Initially, reports indicated closer to 20 deaths in total. These reports claim that before the total devastation of the incident was realized, Tons of locals ran into the streets to be able to drink as much beer as possible for free, causing many to be injured or even killed in the process, with some even being killed afterwards due to overconsumption and alcohol poisoning. However, these are likely untrue. The eight deaths were verified, but the additional deaths were likely because of anti-Irish sentiment. During this time frame, there were a lot of poor Irish immigrants living in the slums of London, particularly within St. Giles. So yes, there were deaths during this, but the reports of people running into the streets and drinking it, and reports of people dying from overconsumption were likely over-exaggerated, fabricated, and totally made up based off of racist sentiment. The Morning Post claimed that it was one of the most melancholy accidents we ever remember. However, there would not be much solace for the victims. Two days after the catastrophe, a jury was convened to determine blame. They visited the site, inspected the damage, and viewed the bodies of the dead. And despite the testimony from Crick and other brewery workers, 
the jury determined that it was simply an act of God and that the victims died casually, accidentally, and by misfortune, freeing the brewery from any legal repercussion. And to add insult to injury, the brewery was granted a special tax evasion from the British Parliament in order to cope with all the lost barrels of beer. But like the wave of beer, the sadness in this story just keeps flowing. In order to pay for the damages and funerals for the dead, and without any help from the brewery or government, many of the survivors had to turn to a macabre sort of fundraising. Surviving family members had to create an exhibit for the bodies of their dead family members as sort of a dark tourism to raise funds. And oddly enough, in one household, the exhibit was so popular that the floor collapsed under the weight of all the morbid tourists, sending them plummeting down into the basement, which was still full of beer. Although this situation was incredibly bad, there were not many long-term effects. The Horseshoe Brewery resumed production shortly after the incident and remained in business until the 1920s when it was demolished and replaced with the Dominion Theater and several small businesses, one of which was the Hallborn Whippet Pub, which brews a recreation of the Manu Porter every year as a reminder of the Flood's anniversary. And this concludes one of the saddest and weirdest moments in beer history.